Okay, here we have example three. It says find the derivative of the function and f of x equals three arc tan x squared. So we do have to use the rule that says the derivative of arc tan of u equals u prime over one plus u squared. So in this case, u is the angle. This is just a constant multiplier. So f prime of x is gonna be three times the derivative of arc tan x squared. But to figure that out, what this fraction is gonna look like, we need to identify u and then find u prime. So in this case, the angle is x squared. So u is x squared, and then u prime would be 2x. So my numerator should be 2x, and my denominator should be 1 plus x squared squared, because u is x squared. So this guy right here is going to be x squared, and then I have another square from the formula. So this ends up being um, 6x over 1 plus x to the fourth. And I cannot reduce that any, so that is the final answer for that one. Um, they do get a little bit more complicated, right? So here this one says find the derivative of this function. Now this function, if I rewrite it, does require me to use a product rule for the first term. But then I'm going to have to use my rules for the inverse trig functions for the second term. And the rule I would have to use here is that d dx of arc cosine u is negative u prime over the square root of 1 minus u squared. Okay, but first let's do this term because that term is going to require me to use um, product rule. So the first factor times the derivative of the second factor using my power rule, and then the base is not just x, so I have to apply the chain rule, plus the second factor times the derivative of the first factor, which is 2x. Now that's all for the first term. Now I'm putting a plus sign, which is this plus sign, and I'm going to find the derivative of the second term. Well, in order to do that, I need to identify u. So in this case, u is x over 2, which means that u prime is going to be 1 over 2. So then here I'm going to have um, minus 1 over 2, and then the square root of 1 minus x over 2 squared. And so this is the derivative but it's not nearly simplified to the manner that they're going to expect inside WebAssign. So we are going to have to simplify this quite a bit. Let's go ahead and start with the first term. So I see this 2 will cancel this 2. And x squared times 1 times negative x is negative x cubed. This negative exponent means that the square root is at the bottom. Um, then I'm going to write my plus sign. Then if I multiply this, this is just 2x times the square root of 4 minus x squared. Here, this is a, this 2 can be written down in the denominator. So 2 square root, and it's not an index, it's a whole number, 2, 1 minus x squared over 4 because x over 2 times itself is x squared over 4. Now over here, I can get a common denominator. So 2x times the square root of 4 minus x squared times same denominator, so we're going to have to multiply by 4 minus x squared, 4 minus x squared. For this third term, we're going to get a common denominator inside the square root. Again, this is a coefficient, not an index. So this common denominator here would be 4. 
And then we end up with negative x cubed over the square root of four minus x squared plus my denominator would be square root of four minus x squared. My numerator would be two x times um, the square root of four minus x squared squared because you have it times itself. Over here, um, I would rewrite this as four minus x squared over four. And then let's see what we've got over here. That wouldn't cancel that out, so I end up with just four minus x squared. Over here, I could take the square root of four minus x squared over the square root of four. These both have the same denominator, so I could put the square root of four minus x squared and just have negative x cubed plus two x times four minus x squared. Over here, I have negative one 2 square root of 4 minus x squared and the square root of 4 is 2. So notice these two guys would cancel. And if I distribute this positive 2x here, you get negative x cubed plus 8x minus 2x cubed over the square root of 4 minus x squared and then a positive and a you could write this as minus 1 over the square root of 4 minus x squared. If you combine the like terms here, and actually these have the same denominator. So I'm going to write the whole thing over 4 minus x squared. But notice here and here you're going to have negative 3x cubed plus 8x and then this minus 1. And this is how they expect you to write it inside WebAssign as one giant fraction, okay? So it's a little bit of work. It's a lot of work, right? But you can get there. Just be very careful and don't rush because the faster you go, the more um, likely you are to make a mistake, right? So this is the last example, example five. It says, find the equation of the tangent line to the graph of the function at the given point. And of course, they gave us an inverse trig function. So we already know the rule for this, and we already know that we have a constant multiplier. Okay, so that means that y is going to have that constant multiplier times now here u is equal to x so u prime is equal to just one oops I forgot my negative so if I take the derivative of this factor I'm going to get negative one over the square root of one minus x squared and if I simplify that it's going to be negative one over two times the square root of one minus x squared. Now, if I wanna have the slope of the tangent line, what I need to do is I need to plug in the x value that I was given into my derivative. So let's see what we get when we plug in negative square root of two over two for x. And you could use your calculator here. I'm gonna to try to simplify it as much as I can by hand. So a negative times a negative is going to be a positive. This minus is this minus, but this term will be positive. Square root of two squared is two, and square of four, I mean square root of two, you get four. So let's see. You get one minus a half which means you get the square root of a half. Um, let's see what that looks like. So you get minus two square root of one over square root of two, which is negative one over 
2 times 1 over square root of 2 or 2 over square root of 2. This pretty much means the reciprocal, right? So you end up with negative square root of 2 over 2. Negative from the 1, and then if you flip that over, it becomes square root of 2 over 2. So that's my slope. Okay, now if I want to have the equation, this is the formula to have the equation, right? Or if you add the y1 over there, it's this equation to find the equation of the tangent line, okay? This y value is not the same as that y value, right? Now the slope I found is negative square root of 2 over 2. The x value of the point I have is negative square root of 2 over 2 and the y value I have is 3 pi over 8. So if I distribute this that's negative 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 which is negative square root of 2 and square root of 2 is 2 2 and 2 is 4. And now the only thing left to do is they always want it written like y equals mx plus b. So you do have the mx part here. Um, that part is good to go. What I don't have is I don't have plus b, like one giant fraction right there, okay? So if I can get a common denominator here and get that big giant fraction. Put a plus sign here because both of these guys are not negative just the 2 here which is going to turn into negative 4 and then that positive 3 pi but now both of them will be over 8 another way you might see it is y equals negative square root of 2 over 2 x plus with the 3 pi in the front and the minus 4 in the back okay but this is the equation to the tangent line that they're looking for.